I have, it's like 30 seconds of five. I'm going to call a meeting to order. Do we have uh, any uh, additions to the agenda, Sarah? Not to my knowledge or information. Okay. Peter? We have. Wait, recording in yes. progress. Phil has something. Uh, yes, can, yeah. can we just um, talk uh, briefly about uh, an update on CV fiber at the end? Yes. Yep. And we have, uh, let's see, we have, we have Jeff Carter, we have Sandy Levine, we have Randy Drury, uh, we have Vic Dwyer, we have Dorinda Crowell, and uh, four members of the select board. And do we have, uh, do we have the Camp Meet boys in the standby mode? I don't have any. Um, maybe that's what Carter is. I don't. I don't have anybody in this standby mode. Jeff, if you can hear us, is that you? Yeah. No, I'm just an interested landowner. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's just five o'clock. Maybe he's a few minutes. Uh, maybe he's a few minutes late. Why don't we do this? Do you have how much stuff do you have, Dorinda? Not much. Um, actually, I really don't have anything. Um, the one thing I'll mention that it doesn't have to be addressed right away, but I did send an email out with a link on it a couple weeks ago for opera updates. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. And um, I have been following a lot of emails going through our treasurer clerk list. And it seems there's a lot of towns that are using this for infrastructure. So I haven't had a chance to read any detail of what the changes were, but obviously they must have been some big ones because people are using it for all sorts of things now. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that also. And uh, my suggestion would be that that once we get through uh, once we get through town meeting and our organizational meeting, we we focus on that and start to really think about what we're going to do because those dates are going to creep up on us pretty fast. Yeah, I have to do the first filing for the report. I think it's either March or April. So. <clears throat> Well, we should all we should all remember that uh, we want to get back to that, and I would encourage all the other board members to read that material that Dorinda sent along. Yes, Sarah. I just want to say that uh, we put the the postcards that we sent out. Uh, the cost of that, we I think we're going to bill to the, to ARPA, right, Dorinda? Well, we put it into COVID for the line item for COVID, okay. and then depending what we do with the ARPA funds, whether or not it'll come out of that at the end or not okay but right now we have a line item that's for covid related expenses okay. yeah perfect perfect uh anything else dorinda no nope, that's about it oh i did have one quick question for you so on the account last week's accounts payable order there was 16,760 to Buzzy's garage. Yes. Vic, what, truck, what truck was that? Do you uh, know? Or Victor, Victor, do you know? Victor can tell you if not, I'll look it up. So most of it is on the freight liner. Holy mackerel. And a little, and a little <laughs> bit on the, uh, the uh, Steve's truck there, the International. Yeah, a lot of lot of bills, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, maintenance. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable how expensive everything is. That was the only question I had, Dorinda. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, <clears throat> there was a lot of expenses for repairs um, last week. Yep. yep. We can't. Go ahead, Vic. We're having trouble trying to figure out how come that uh, the newest truck, that Freightliner, just rusts out. The whole bottom underneath of it is just, I mean, it looks like a 10-year-old truck. 
Yeah. Let's buy five gallons of bar and chain oil and put the sluice to it. Mm -hmm. Try and stop it somehow. We need to do something, right? We should. I. <clears throat> they're washing. Um, they're washing the trucks more. You know, they're washing them regularly now. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not so sure. I mean, let's face it. Uh, heat and salt and moisture will probably rust anything that's steel. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a perfect. It. Yeah. So. So we have. Uh... We've got a bunch of people signing in here, uh, and we've got 802-2499 or 8406 raising his hand or her hand. Yeah, that's Russ Bennett calling Hi, on his cell phone. Okay, I thought it might be you. Thank you. We're we're anxiously yep. waiting your arrival. <laughs> well done. Uh, wow. Well. So we've been. Um, We've been doing a, a little other business while we were waiting a few minutes for you. But if you're uh, if you're ready to go, we're we're ready for you. And I think we've got a, okay. a number of people with us here who are interested in what you have to say, including the right. Board. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to give. Yeah, I'm just going to try to give you a high level sort of where we're at um, and where we think we want to go, and then the devil will be in the details, and that'll come along as we discover them. Um, so yep. first, um, just a little update on planetary matters and, and the properties that are Camp Mead. Um, uh, we've got some pretty interesting new tenants. It looks like they're coming along. Uh, so that'll be, I think, great for the town. They'll all be assets um, that are across the food and art realm, pretty much. Um, no, no major, yep, yeah, take care, honey. No major doings. The only thing that's sort of uh, on a construction kind of a thing is um, we're going to, we're working with Tesla to put in a eight station charging station um, on the end of the White House towards the north. Um, and I think that'll be good for, um, all kinds of business because uh, it'll bring electric cars and it'll bring uh, electric cars that probably have some more disposable income than some others. So there's that. We're going to continue to work with the um, trail committee and the planning commission on getting the trails done down to the overlooks, which I think are pretty stunning. Um, down there by the river, when you get a chance to go down and look down into the into the dam, it's pretty pretty exciting. Um, so that's that for camp meet. Unless you guys have any questions, are you still there? Yes, we are here. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, I don't have a screen on because I have to call on my phone because for some reason I'm having a computer problem. Um, and then uh, the Colby Farm, Galaxy of Yes, is the LLC that we formed for that um, because we want to say yes to uh, whatever kind of community it is I think we all want to have. Um, we, uh, we're, we've started doing ground exploration. We've hired Stone uh, Environmental to do septic discovery and that kind of stuff and uh, a groundwater hydrogeologist <clears throat> to see what uh, we actually can come up with for water, uh, water in and water out there, because that'll, that'll guide a lot of what, um, what we can dream stuff, but then what's for real, you know. Um, so, but we'll Russ, it's, Russ, it's Peter. Excuse me, I'm interrupting you, but yeah. um, you should stop by the office or have them stop by the office. Uh, when we were exploring how many years ago was it? Eight years ago? Ten years ago? Explore. No, it was 21 years ago, Peter. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, that shows that shows how my life goes. Anyway, have you have you looked at that information? Because yes. they yes, identified sites up at the Colby Farm, which were good for water. 
Yes, they're, they're roughly um, identified. Rules have changed some. Um, there's some uh, fracture trace analyses that were done. And we're going to bring in, in the next couple of weeks, uh, a VLF kind of a thing, which is very low frequency, below anything we can hear, to uh, survey where we think there might be uh, deep groundwater uh, wells, given the fracture fracture seams, et cetera, that were further identified and we further looked at with geologists. Um, yep. So we'll see. It's, it's all just hand waving, you know, until, <laughs> until we actually hit something. We'll also um, bore for uh, gravel wells because those can also be high yield. Um, but while we're on that part of the sort of topic, one of the things uh, that I came to my mind is one, you guys were looking for water and that was identified as a site that might work for the town. We're going to need to develop a water system no matter what for what we're doing. Um, and if we find a ton of water, we would not be averse to saying, is there something we can work together with the, you guys on to bring water to the town for two reasons? One, because you know you have a fair amount of properties that probably don't meet their isolation distances for wells and uh, septic systems and all that kind of jazz. And two, um, <clears throat> since we're going to be pretty far up gradient, we probably would be able, if there's enough, you know, um, it might be enough to provide hydrant, you know, enough, enough head pressure to provide hydrant for fire department kind of stuff for the commercial district. So that's, um, yeah, go get it, Tweety. Um, that's that's to be thought about, you know, because I imagine the, the landscape hasn't changed a lot in the ground as to what really needs to be done long term for the town. So uh, we, we want to try and be good neighbors. And if we find ourselves with an embarrassment of riches, then we should share it. <laughs> um, that's, that's what that is. And then uh, we'll start, we haven't really created any plans and kind of things that we can start permitting for, but we do have thoughts. Um, and we think the couple of things that we're going to want to lead with, if we can, you know, make all the uh, local and state Act 250 permitting work, is we think I, we would lead with uh, a daycare up to about 150. And we're talking with a couple of experienced uh, long-term daycare providers that, you know, do a good job, educational, all that kind of stuff to see who we can partner with to do that. Um, that's going to take a little bit of time, no matter how quickly we do whatever might come. Um, so that's a year or two off before being able to be realized. Um, the other thing that we uh, think we'd like to do in conjunction with that would be the beginning of a small uh, music and art school um, that, you know, could, could build from the ground up. Um, concurrently, we'll look at, uh, you know, we'll do X amount of septic will guide what we can do for the first phase. Um, and we would, again, want to start doing some residential development and uh, do 10% of that as perpetually affordable. So those are our goals. And I think uh, one other thing from a building standpoint we're looking at doing is some kind of a barn-like community center kind of thing, which could host events, you know, little events. They could be, whether it's potluck things or the occasional wedding or something like that might, might all work out in one little hub. Um, the other things I want to be clear about is um, we've started going up through where some of the log roads were and where the legal trail is to clean them up so that people can walk or ski up and down it. And we want to keep as much of those things open to the public as possible. Um, the, uh, oh, we also are talking with solar providers to, um, we've gotten pricing, which is pretty stunning, uh, as to what it would cost to put solar array in enough to make the entire project net zero. 
um, uh, you know, not knowing what the entire project is, but a fair amount. And if we can figure it out, we would try and do a lot of that up front because that would immediately, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations. It would immediately take some fossil fuel or other, you know, forms of generation off before we were able to, before we were actually able to use it. But that could have a, you know, a net value to us all long run. Um, so those are, from an infrastructure standpoint, the, the highlights. We haven't looked at, you know, we're going to want to have a conversation with the planning commission about some small tweaks to the uh, zoning um, and, and those kinds of things. You know, maybe we want, uh, we want to see some things from a building standpoint, just like we talked about down there on Route 2 on Main Street, uh, the ability to have some higher and lower buildings um, because if the uh, zoning, I think it's presently 35 feet, if your zoning is, if all the buildings are being built at 35 feet, it means there's it's sort of an arbitrary height that maybe isn't going to provide the best long-term and, and an interesting um, collection of architecture. So um, those are the highlights. Russ, speaking speaking for the board and hopefully speaking for the town, um, and speaking personally, I'm I'm excited to uh, to see that property develop. There have been a lot of uh, uh, a lot of proposals from the former owner of different different ways to utilize that property, and none of them have ever worked out. So um, we'll be as we'll be as friendly as we can be to you, and I I appreciate your uh, your uh, offer on the water. I mean, we'll just have to see how that how that plays out. But certainly, certainly, it's appealing to uh, to bring some water down into the village if we could figure out how to do it. Yeah, I think one of the things we want to keep a close eye on is what kind of um, infrastructure money might be coming down the pike from the feds. So the we know we have some already in the state. And now might be a time when if, if, if we discover water, it's a big if, but if we discover enough and we can do it in the right way, there might be a way that would be more palatable to the town than it was before. Uh, yeah. if, there's other, if there's other money. Yeah. Um, well, so we, just what, have to, we just have to play it out. Our, our, our previous proposal was not warmly received to say the least, so. Uh-huh. We got some. Um, well, but let's see. I mean, now we'll know. You know, the the big uncertainty then was, as as I'm sure you know, is was there really water there? We didn't drill any test wells. We didn't do any any uh, exploration to actually develop the water. If all of a sudden there's water, that might get people interested. Yeah, I think until until we know there's water, it's it's, it's fun to imagine. So right. that's basically what we're doing. We're we're trying to think ahead and, and hope for the best because after all we are the galaxy of yes. <laughs> um, the, uh, oh, the other thing from a business standpoint um, that, I, that we're planning on doing working with uh, condominium law to keep the entire property together. Um, people will be able to buy and, and design, you know, have personal designs depending on what it is, what houses may be, some houses will be single family, some will be multifamily, um, so that they can build equity. Um, but we want the, uh, the goals and the aspirational mission of the project, which is really to be, um, you know, a little community hub that, that makes it more um, exciting for the uh, original village of Middlesex to be able to stay intact and somebody can't just sell a piece and then become a naysayer to good things, uh, if that makes any sense to you. So uh, that means that we would see probably um, if we, you know, we've got to crunch the numbers, but we'll see, we'll probably self tax, you know, through condominium um, association pieces for a lot of what normally would be your know, town road or whatever. Um, 
which uh, we are plowing the town road right now, by the way. <laughs> so people can get in there. And um, one of the things I was, if we get some snow, you know, there's a nice little sledding hill from the center road side where that little lot used to be down into, you know, halfway down to the, to the end of uh, Colby Road. So people could sort of unload their kids at the top and then drive down and catch them at the bottom um, if the snow, you know, continues to fall. Questions for us, anyone? Sounds good. It's exciting. Great. I agree. Yeah, we'll put that in the details. So we'll bring you details as we start to really have something that goes from um, aspirational to documentable, you know, and then, you know, the discussions will vary around what's possible. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing from you, Russ, and we look forward to working with you. Ditto. It's a pleasure to be working with you in this town. Thank you very much. Thanks, Russ. Thank you all. Yep. Bye for now. So, uh, Dorinda, you're all set, correct? Okay, so Highway Department, update on road conditions, action possible. Victor. Yeah, um, as you've probably noticed, we went around and pushed the snowbanks back a little bit. We uh, used the grader to uh, take some of those rough spots out that uh, come from winter uh, freeze thaw. And uh, I guess uh, we're just trying to uh, keep the roads up. So, and uh, we're trying to keep the overtime at a minimum. Well, uh, you're gonna have some overtime in the next few days, I dare say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We'll see. We'll see. And other than that, uh, unless you have some questions, it's really, we're just bouncing wrong with our winter maintenance. Yep. Yeah. So we are, uh, there's something about February 1st, which always makes me start to think about spring. So when do we need to be uh, moving ahead with our paving projects, signing contracts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, getting updated estimates? Yeah, we, as you know, last fall, we were a little nervous about doing the pipe crossings and doing the, the uh, uh, pre-paving work that we, uh, that uh, we wanted to do. And uh, we're in contact with, uh, with the uh, uh, paving company and they said it's no issue if we move it back a little bit they're going they're not going to push us uh as originally stated we we're going to try to do it in june right if we can't make it uh, uh they said that uh, they would push it back for us perfect yeah. uh we just want to make sure we're maybe not at the head of the line but at the front of the line as they say right yeah it sounded like we could uh nice the you, hold on Go ahead, Rick. I just want to be clear in the minutes. When you say pushing back it, we're talking about the center roll road pothole situation. Is that it? No, no push back the paving. Project. What? Paving project. Okay. And where exactly are we paving? Say that again. Is the pave Go ahead, Victor. I'm sorry. No, say that again, please, sir. Sure. I just want to know for the minutes, what are we paving? We're not, I thought we were paving center road where all the potholes were. No. Well, we are basically going to pay from where we started down by the interstate to Steve's house. Okay. I just want to be clear. That's center road, right? I'm, I'm yeah, that is center road. Okay. The plan, the plan is right now we were going to, uh, we were going to uh, grind the uh, existing pavement, but uh, we're thinking about removing the pavement, regrading the road and okay. uh, building it up with good material and then uh, paving it. 
that was the that's our that's our plan right now. And and what we're pushing back is the time we were originally going to start and we're trying to start in uh, June. I mean, we'll try to we'll do it as quick as we can, but I really don't know what the spring is going to bring. And we have several culverts. Well, not we have a few culverts that we have to replace, and that that'll take a little time. We got to do a little ditching down through there. Um, we got to do some prepar preparation work a little bit more if we remove the pavement. That's the plan. Thank you, Victor. Any questions, anyone, for Victor? Yep. This, is, this is Randy, Peter. I've got a okay, question. Um, my memory tells me that uh, the small section of McCullough Hill from center to the bridge was separate from the bid that we received. And I'm not clear as to whether or not that's part of this paving project or not. As it is now, right now, because we had uh, the grant was, was uh, we got a, the $175,000 grant and then uh, we have the money in our paving fund. I, um, we were gonna do uh, the pave it, pave it back to the bridge uh, on uh, McCullough Hill. Okay, so that is, that is included. We'd like right to pave it right up McCullough Hill and up your driveway too, but I don't think we'll be able to do that this year. Right? <laughs> we, can only, we can only take care of one board member's driveway at a time. We're going to create a nice paved turnaround. It's next to Steve's barn there. Yeah, right. I'm sure he's happy. He's closest, so that's the way it ought to be. <laughs> so, so. So Vic, just to be clear, you're also going to, as well as paving that section from the interstate to Steve's farm, repaving that, you're also going to use the money that you have from the $175, $1,000 grant and the town funds, town paving fund to pave up to the bridge from the center road? Yeah, where it's paved okay. now. Yeah. I know, but to repave it to the, to the bridge. Yeah. Okay, right. thank you. Anything else, Vic? I don't, I don't. Well, get the trucks, get the trucks fueled up, get the boys fueled up. They're going to be busy. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Vic. Yeah, thank you. Um, certificate of highway mileage. And Sarah sent that to us. It reflects mm -hmm. the part of Dolan Road that we threw up, which reduces our our total mileage. Other than that, it is, I believe, exactly what we have done in the past. Does anyone have any questions about that, or is there a motion to approve it? Move approval. Second. Okay, thank you. All in favor of approving the certificate of highway mileage, please say aye. 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 But we're zipping right along here. This might be the most efficient select board meeting we've had in a long time. Um, approving minutes of January 18th, 2022 select board meeting for motion. No approval. Thank you, Phil. Second. Okay. Thank you, Steve. All in favor of approving the minutes of January 18th, uh, the select board meeting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved them. We've already talked about the about the orders and signing the orders. Uh, did anybody have any questions or concerns on the orders? Looking at them? No. Other than the big truck repair bill? Okay. Um, correspondence, Sarah. No, I think we're good. Okay, and other matters that might come before the board, you wanted to give us an update, Phil, on CB Fiber. Um, yeah, not so much an, an update, but I, I, I didn't know if any uh, of, of you received the CV Fiber newsletter via email. Anybody else? No. Yes, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Um, I just thought I, I would bring up that, uh, well, first of all, there's a new chair. Uh, Jeremy Hansen stepped down as chair and Jerry Diamatidis, who has a background in... Um, consulting on cons large construction projects is taking over that role. Um, he's also the one who wrote the first uh, USDA grant for 
uh, CV fiber. So I think that's that's a good uh, uh, a good move, and Jerry will uh, be very helpful. The thing that interested me, and Dorinda brought up uh, again, what's been going around on the treasurer's list about use of ARPA funds, but uh, and I think we should explore that. But the I don't know what that I can't remember what the name of the entity is, the broadband council or whatever has issued a call and will match any ARPA funds that a town puts in to CV Fiber. And CV Fiber now has said that any town that contributes that money will be spent in the town as opposed to their previous position, which was it just goes into the general hopper. Um, but they have this other grant, which will be a matching funds grant. So I just wanted to make sure that we don't you know, don't lose sight of this. We've got the money, we're sitting on it. Um, and I think maybe as we have a general discussion also about the infrastructure piece, and I, I did look at the stuff that you sent, Dorinda, but I I honestly didn't quite make heads nor tails of it as far as what's exactly allowable for infrastructure. So I got to dig in a little bit more. Um, but I think, Peter, you thought, let's get through town meeting and then come back and talk about some of this. So I think that's that's a good timeline. But so I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention that there's a, a little bit more incentive out there that we might want to look at. Well, I think the I think what's happening from what I can see and what Dorinda can see is uh, what we were hoping was going to happen is as this process went along, more things would be uh, more things would be eligible. And certainly, yeah. certainly, if we can help help the town out in other ways, uh that's great i have to believe there's going to be some money in there for broadband there's an awful lot of money there but oh, sure is. we need to we need to uh we need to get to it and figure it out and i think many other towns are in the same position we're in so yep. so they're going to be uh they're going to be doing the same uh the same thing um i the only other thing i have is just uh for you liz i did see uh I did see the the stuff about the grant uh, that you're concerned about. Yep. For the town hall, the emails this afternoon. Did you see them from Christian? Oh, I saw an email come through. I honestly have didn't get a chance to even look at it. What did he say? Okay, well, there's some things we need to do sooner rather than later. And oh, I didn't okay. really study it. I just I just uh, skimmed through it. But uh, you mean like deadlines that are due sooner yes, than we thought? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. I'll look at it. Okay. Okay. Let me know if you need my help or need yeah. any help. Yes, Randy. Uh, Phil, are there any deadlines to that uh, matching grant funds that you're aware of? Um, yeah, there is one. Um, it's it's not imminent. But it, it's a ways out there. Several months, maybe half to three quarters of a year. I'll go. I'll go back and look at it and keep it on the radar. But we've got. Um, we've got plenty of time to deal with it but that's good i i perked up when i saw that randy because that's a good way to really leverage our money and get yep. more uh, get more benefit anything else anyone um i would and i don't know uh i don't know if uh everyone is aware but uh our cohort uh mary skinner did not uh, decide to run for re-election. Mm -hmm. So uh, Randy has uh, stepped up and put his name uh, in the hat for that for that seat. Thank you, Randy. And uh, other than that, I believe we have no contested. We have well, we virtually have no contested elections. Is that still true, Sarah? As far as you know. Yeah, there's no contest election. We have every single lister seat open, the three-year seat, the two of three-year, and the one of three-year. So if you know anyone who is inclined toward real estate or might want to be, be interested in a career where you learn how to assess properties, you can do it for other towns, now is the time to get that person written in. 15 signatures, that's all you need. Not 15 signatures, 15 votes. Just like a petition. <laughs> and we need somehow, some way to find if we can't if we can't get people to run we're going to need to find people to appoint because our contract 
with NAMREC requires us to have two listers. Right now we have zero. And what we really need are people who are semi-computer liter literate. And not, you don't have to be, you know, a whiz bang. You just need someone who's knows how to get their email, can file online forms. I mean, it's nothing really big. But that's that's the big holdup currently. Okay. And NAMREC will do some training for us if we everybody will do training. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's There's training. And the the other thing, if you're if you're talking to people about this position is remember that we have entered into a contract. So the actual inspections of the property is not going to be part of the part of our listers duties. They're not going to be reaching out to citizens in town and inspecting their property, but they are going to be responsible for generating the grand list and doing tax appeals and all that uh, and all that stuff. But uh, they won't be uh, running around in mud season with their tape measures and their uh, and their uh, inspection glasses on. So that might that might what would what we really need. I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, but the way the, the way the process works is the NEMRIC people will be doing the inspections and uploading that information into the computer. But then there's a step that we have to do to transition that data into the database which generates the grand list and the tax bills and all that stuff so a lot i'm of not sure exactly what that data is but you know i'm sure nemric or somebody will sit by them and hold their hand while they create a grand list it shouldn't be that hard but it's but my understanding is and is it's basically an in the office function dealing with the dealing with a computer they're not running around in their own cars in the field looking at buildings yeah phil what are our options if we are unable to elect and or appoint listers? So my, my understanding is we get to try and hire listers. Hold okay. on to your hold on to your checkbook if it comes down to That's that. That's what I thought. Yeah. Let me just say uh, something. First of all, you're allowed to hire an assessor. You still have it because you haven't gotten rid of listers. You're just hiring an assessor. Yeah. Um, but here's the here's the COVID switch or whatever you want to call it. Assessors are really hard to come by. To just give you an idea, you have to. There's there are professional appraisers who they're a whole different world. Like uh, Marco Garcia, whom we used on the FEMA project. Uh, it's a it's a very onerous onerous process to become an appraiser. It's a little less for an assessor. However, we're not the only town in this situation. Right. And. That I, I just don't know. I mean, I hate, I hate to think about it. It would be so much easier if we could get people from the community, some who are computer literate, to step in, oversee this uh, this hired assessor that we have now, and then take it forward. So I'm just afraid we won't get anybody. How about putting out a, a plea, Sarah? I do want to put out a plea. I don't want any, you know, Tom, Dick, and Susan to come in and say, oh, I'll be an assessor because to be yeah. quite honest, we've kind of had that. Uh, yeah. Over the past year, we have trained we've trained two people who have gotten a certain part in the process and can't do it. One has de re developed a, you know, she's gotten a new job, so she can't. So that's not fair to her. But the, you know, another person we did train and then just gave up. So I, I we really need people who are committed. And I've been talking to people, uh, trying to do what I can. It's just it's just not easy. You, you, as, as Eric says, you, you need somebody who can be there during the day to answer questions. And that's just not someone who's very available. Yeah. The, other thing, the other thing I would, I would uh, point out is in our, in our payroll adjustment, that only, that also uh, pertain to potential listers. So there is, it's not, it's not big money, but there's real money associated with doing this for a part-time job. Yeah, there's real money, and also, you know, I, someone could set them, them, themselves up with a nice little career if they decide to just do that. You know, it's you could become, you could work for a bunch of towns. It would be great. Yeah, and you don't have to reach the same level as uh, of uh, you know licensed appraisers do. What's what's the ask? Is it a day a week? It's uh, Randy. It's kind of seasonally intensive. So and the the lister year, the calendar year begins April first. So whatever property exists at whatever state it's in, April first, that's the the go point. And the grand list itself should be developed by the beginning of April. And then you go through the whole grievance process, listening to people come in, 
um, and appeal their valuations. And then you file the grand list in June, early July. And that's what the, the, the uh, town uses to base its tax rate on. So, I mean, it's really intensive right there. And so you could work many, many hours in those weeks. On the other hand, I don't really know because this is the first time we've ever had a hired assessor doing this as opposed to a townwide reappraisal. So it's, it may not be as many hours as you think, but it's, you know, it's an intense hours. Then August, it begins to drift off. And then, you know, so it's, it's just really seasonal. Yes, Dorinda. We were, we had them budgeted previously for like 655 hours a, a year. And that got dropped to between 250 and 300. So, um, so I mean, that was a significant drop when we brought on the assessor. Yeah. But the, I, I would say, I would agree with Sarah, the, the busy time is, is in the spring through, mm -hmm. through midsummer. In the, in the fall and uh, late summer, fall and winter, it's pretty quiet, very quiet. There's quite a bit of work once um, people, like they do all the updates when people file their HS-122s late. And so throughout the summer and the fall, we have a lot of updates to, um, they have to reproduce tax bills and things like that. But it, that's not a ton of time, but it is what they do throughout the end of summer and fall. Yeah. Thank and you. In and as Eric says, you know, when you're dealing with the state, you can't deal with the state after hours. You have to deal with the state during the day, and you deal with the state a lot. <laughs> and, and Sarah, just to be just to be clear, Eric is now saying that he's willing to stay on and help doing some, do some training, but he really does want to get done. Eric wants to get done. <laughs> yeah, okay. we're 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 trying to work. I'm trying to say. Eric, if we can find some really enthusiastic, extremely computer savvy person who can sit next to you and you know, you can just tell them what about it, then I think maybe he can stay. If there if he does not want all of this burden to to fall on his shoulders, he's done. You know, he's ready to retire. No, I don't blame him. So we're we're looking for two, hoping desperately for one, and then we can can uh It'd be great if we had keep him involved. I mean, the good thing about the good thing about Eric is he has a lot of institutional knowledge. He's looked at a lot of these properties. He knows what they are. And it's unfortunate to uh, to lose that because you can you can look at the paperwork, you can look at the computer report, but if you haven't actually seen the property, it's hard to know. Uh, it's hard to know what, what's what. But anyway, we just got to work our way. Uh, we got to work our way through this. And uh, Sarah reports that the uh, town report is uh, in the process, done from our town point of view, right? We're just waiting for it to be printed. I don't know. I think Dorinda might have something to say about that. Oh, okay. Now, I, I talked to Sarah tonight. We got that figured out. So I Yay! said, I, yeah, so that was taken care of, not an issue. I do have one thing I forgot to mention when you're all done. Go ahead. Um, so the fire department uh, submitted stipends um, for the uh, their people. In the past, it's only they've always submitted them once a year, but evidently they've in their meeting they've changed their bylaws and they're now going to submit them twice a year. But during their reorganization or their rewrite of their bylaws, they went back and made the new rates of pay effective back to last May. So we've been hit with a substantial bill from them for the stipends. Um, I told Eric I was gonna mention it to the select board because I didn't know if your understanding was that these new stipends would go into effect like when we you know, when you had your meeting with them, but now I have, you know, this bill that does go back. So, um, and it, it's, it's going to be, and this is only for half a year, then we'll have the other half come in at the end of May again. So my understanding was, and I believe I'm right on this, but maybe I misunderstood, 
when they were talking to us about increasing the stipends in their in their budget presentation, that to me meant that the increase in the stipends would be effective July 1st next year, not retroactive to July 1st this year. Well, that's why is I'm that, bringing is that it what up. Other, is that what other <laughs> board members remember? No. Oh. No, I think the stipends were were effective immediately, but not retroactive. I don't didn't remember anything about that, but I think the stipends were going to be effective immediately. So they were going to be that effective. That's my understanding. November. Right, November, December, whenever that time, whatever that time frame was, but not retroactive back to May. How much was that bill, Dorinda? Um, I don't recall what the amount is um, off the top of my head, but, you know, where people were getting, you know, $50, $100, whatever, you know, they're now like 600 and 500 and it's a substantial difference. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not saying we shouldn't pay it. I just don't know mm -hmm. at what point that you know, you guys accepted that change and that's why I'm asking. And I told Eric that I would bring it up. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, at, at Liz and Phil. Do you agree with Steve that that's what we, I don't know if there's anything in the minutes. I mean, I can go back and look at the minutes, but probably it's clear as mud in the minutes. I have to say that the my I did go through the minutes looking for this and what you what what transpired was and I believe it was in August. Uh, you said you know you if you want to pay these guys more, pay them more, and then they just paid them more. There wasn't any type of motion by the board to 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 do that. It was just then the next meeting, Jeff said, "Well, we we started paying them more, and that's been really helpful to morale." Yeah. Okay. Right, but then my well, question is, how do they get paid? Like if they've like it's been helpful to morale, but did they actually get money, or they just knew that they were going to get this by yearly payment? Or are you saying they're billing us? They give them on a regular basis. I see. No, so so, now, they, so they want us to issue the check just like we issue your stipends once a year. They've now going to ask for their stipends twice a year. And they so they submitted it for basically the, the first half of the year. And for some reason, um, in the transition or whatever, they forgot to include May's hours. And so they're kind of just throwing those into June, I mean, into July. And uh, but my question is, are they asking us to pay them back because they already gave this money to the firefighters and volunteers? They have, no, no, we pay. No, 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 they want us to write the checks, Liz. Okay, so how did morale get better if we hadn't written any checks? Because they knew they were going to get more money? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't they actually had money. Okay, no. so, um, and this was, you said August, Sarah? I'm just saying that in the, the, I believe the discussion was in August in the, in the September meeting you had with the fire department, uh, Jeff said that, um, he said morale is good, especially okay. since the volunteers are paying com or being compensated at a rate of $10 an hour for calls now. So that was September. Okay. So that so was my guess time. is at least half of that is August, September, October, November, December, five months is the new pay anyway. Right. Dorinda. Yeah. And so, so anything we're looking from at July 1st on. I'm yeah. sorry, say that again? July, July through December. Okay, so, but but basically, July was the one month that then if it's really July, July is the one month that they would have had the old payment. They have some old hours in there that they forgot to include previously. Right, but most of it is the new hours, right? Right, but it's all under the new rate. Yeah, Everything I mean, I, is under it sounds the new like rate. probably the majority of those hours are under the new rate anyway. So I'm like, just pay it, right? I mean, they're volunteers. If it's one month, one and a half months of this extra, you know, pay, my vote would be to say, pay them their, pay them this few months of their time when it was pre the new well, hours. Here's the, here's the question, though. The question is, do they presume 
that they have money in their budget to pay this, or are they is this all going to be uh, an overage in their budget? No, no it's, it's not. But it's just like we did with the town employees' wages. Yeah. It's unbudgeted funds. <clears throat> well, do we know? Do we know that for a fact? Yeah. Are they, are they yeah. thinking they have some of their equipment money they can save? Yes, Steve. What was their? They they had a budget item in there for stipends. Correct. Uh, yes. It's, uh, it's not very much. Let's see. It is. Uh, we did increase it this year. Last year it was three thousand dollars, and this year they put in for eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. So maybe there's now when you say this year, you mean this fiscal year we're in right now? No, no. no. For twenty three. Okay. Right. Well, I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about the next one. So is, does that mean that they anticipate this year that we're going to have a fifteen to eighteen thousand dollar unfunded expense? Is that what we're talking about? It could could be. I don't know. I mean, certainly they could have put it in their budget when they came in December. They no, have it for the next, next year's year budget. But they don't have it for was... the current year budget. Oh, for the current year, yeah. yeah. Right. And so, and interestingly enough, in 21, they only spent $1,210. And so with, and it was a $3,000 budget. Um, yeah. So. What's the bill that they've submitted to us now? I, I, I apologize. I don't have it at home and I don't okay, remember it, what it was. $3,000? Is it $8,000? You don't have any memory? I want to say that it might have been seven or something like that. I, I honestly don't remember. Okay. So, well, the, here's the question. The, the only question for me in this is, do we say, you know, look, we presume the new rates were going to be effective the day we said, okay, go ahead. And, you know, we understand you're not the Middlesex Fire Department yet, but to the, to the extent you're exceeding your budget and expending the town to pay for it, to all of a sudden go back to May, and I don't care if it's $500 or $700 or whatever the difference is, I don't think, I don't think we should pay that. But maybe everybody else disagrees. I just. Yeah, I agree, Peter. I. I... I certainly don't remember anything about retroactivity and I'm, you know, I'm fine with going from September or whatever it is when we came to that agreement with them and moving forward. I mean, that's already going to impact the budget, but, you know, we were trying to, to work with them and get, you know, get things smoothed out and going in the right direction. So, um, you know, I, I prefer to stay with something like that from September forward. I, let me go back tomorrow and find the bill and I can email everybody. I told Eric he wasn't going to get, they weren't going to get paid, um, you know, in the latest pay run anyways, that because I, I had to bring it up to the board um, well, let's see, just to get let's, clarification. Let's, let's take a look at, at, at what the bill actually is and what the money is and what the overage is and then, uh, yeah. then we'll make a decision. I know we agreed. I know we agreed to the increase, and I know we agreed. We approved the amount in the in the or Yes, we did approve the amount in the budget for uh, for next year. But uh, Steve's got his hand. I want to be fair. I just don't want to give the. I just don't want to give the ranch away. That's all. Yeah. Giving the ranch away. Yes. Yes. Steve. I I agree with you in that sense. However, I think we should find out what uh, Eric or whoever has told these people about the stipends. If they've already told them they're going to get this money, and they don't, that's that's a little. Well, that's going to be a little bit of a hit in the gut. My yeah. my view of this my view of this is, let's find out what the bill is, and then have a conversation with Eric and say, Eric, you know, so where did the retroactive part come from so we can understand that and you know see if we can figure out what the what the retroactive amount is i mean if it's 800 or a thousand dollars i don't want to get in a fight with them over 800 or a thousand dollars but no. this is exactly why this is exactly why 
It should be a town fire department. So we don't have situations like this. They cannot, and they've been really good over the years about living within their budget. And I, and I acknowledge that, but to just go ahead and rewrite their bylaws. So they make the, so they make the stipends three months retroactive. That to me is overreaching. So anyway, okay. but I don't mind, I don't mind having the conversation with, with Eric or Dorinda, you and I can have a conference call with them or whatever it takes. I don't want to, I definitely want to be very careful that we don't throw Eric under the bus, Steve, believe me. Right. We need that him. One. And we need him on our on our side of this. Yep. Okay. Well, listen, I just want to say one thing, and that is that as you're making your decision, keep my thoughts in mind, which is that I, I believe most of this paycheck is during the time that we said we would cover them. If we, if it was July that we had this conversation, you know, at the very least, cover the whole month of July. Liz, and, we're gonna we're gonna get all that information. Okay. We're gonna get back to you. We're not gonna. I mean, these are just volunteers, and then it's not like they're oh, you know, I really get, wealthy I, people. I get it. I get it. And this they've money big, means a lot to them. They've got a big pay raise. Maybe we should go back five years. I will say the invoice I the invoice I got did not have a breakdown of hours and when they took place. It was just a total that we were to pay along with the list of names. Yeah, so maybe the first the first question is to ask ask Eric what's the you know, they must have a chart or a graph or a yeah. spreadsheet or something that shows. I can I can email Eric. He's very receptive. He's yeah. um, really understanding. And I can email him and ask him if he can send us a breakdown of what those numbers are. Yep. That'd be great. Yes, Sarah. Okay. I just want to say, going through the minutes, that the, the big come to Jesus meeting you guys had with these, with the fire department was in May. And that is when you had the serious discussion about, uh, well, you know, this is when Gary Dillon was talking about how much they pay in Waterbury. And yeah. he said, look, if you need more money, you know, go do it. So that was May of 2021. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You didn't, there was no formal approval. It was right. just like, if that's what you need to do to keep these guys good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think, think that's, that's, what, I think that's what, what happened. happened. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, I think we're on the hook, but let's let's yeah. get the breakdown and uh, yep. and look at it. Agreed. Okay, I'll ask him for that. Okay, thank you, Brenda. Yep. Uh, anything else, anyone? Uh, just uh, very briefly, Peter. Yes. Uh, you guys, you're going to have a meeting with the fire department next uh, at your next meeting. That's the second meeting of the month. Do you want to discuss yep. put it on the agenda for that meeting? These stipends? No, we're going to deal with we're going to deal with this before that. Okay, we're not going to have a special meeting though, are we? No, I hope not. <laughs> um, and the other thing, what, let's see what every let's see what everybody thinks. My recommendation is we get this breakdown. If their thinking is that we said these increases were effective in May, and that's what the minutes and that's what the minutes reflect, I think we're on the hook for it. Yep, agreed. And I I really mean it when I say the last thing I want to do with all the progress we've made. Is to go backwards and get a fight, get in a fight with them over a relatively small amount of yeah, money. Right. We're buying uh, sixteen thousand dollars worth of truck repairs. Like you know, there's no stopping us. Anyway, yeah, and, we, and we don't need to throw the new chief under the bus either. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Um, for those for those who don't know. Sarah has dedicated the uh, town report to Mary, which I think is a nice thing to do. Yeah. Very nice. I mean, she- That's so sweet, she, Sarah. She spent a lot, of, uh, a lot of time and a lot of meetings over the years. So she deserves to be uh, called out and respected and thanked. And it's too bad we're not gonna have, uh, we're not gonna have an in-person meet, town meeting so we could really recognize her, but I will make a point at our informational meeting of uh, recognizing her. 30, 24 years of service. Wow. Yep. Yep. That sounds like more like a sentence than a service. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not commutable. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just saying in all, in all seriousness and, and, you know, Mary and I have had our disagreements from time to time over the years, but 
She's given us a lot of good advice and counsel over the years, and she's been an active participant in the select board, and she deserves to be recognized. So I feel good about that. So she is. Okay. Thank you, one and all. Have a good evening. One hour on the nose. Pretty one good. <laughs> See ya. One yeah, your cocktail. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye.